is a short tutorial for using Scribbler. Um, first of all, you need to log in to www.scribbler.com, as you can see. Um, I already have an account, so I'm going to log in. If you don't have an account, then you can select the Create Account option from the top right hand corner of the screen. So I'm going to log in to my account. sign in okay so once I've signed in to Scribbler you can see that um, on the left hand side I have a list of rooms I've already created or I can create a new Scribbler room um, I've actually got a room here created called Acer Workshop so I'm going to go straight into that room all right, and I've got some choices here that I can make. I can name my room, which is Acer Workshop. I can set a password if I want to. Um, sorry, I can't set a password. You need to upgrade to the professional account. With the free account, you can't set a password. Um, I can allow people to invite other users, or I can choose not to. Um, I can allow the link to be embedded on a website or um, perhaps in a PowerPoint and I've set it so I can actually set my guests to become moderators if, if I want them to. Okay so at the bottom of the screen we visit the room. just wait for my room to load okay and now I'm into my scribbler room so you can see at the top I'm logged in as Elaine S and I'm connected to my room which is Acer Workshop I've got an option here to use the microphone which then allows me to start an audio broadcast if I'm working with a student. This can be quite useful if, if you're working with Skype. If, if, if you want to send a link to a scribbler room to a student whilst you're on Skype with them, don't activate the microphone in scribbler, use the microphone from Skype. If you're just working with Scribbler, then you'll need to turn on the microphone for your students to hear you. And you can see I'm logged in as Elaine S in an admin role. I'm the only participant currently, um, but as my students join me, you would see other participants. With the free version of Scribbler, you can only have two participants um, at any one time. So this, this resource is really useful um, if you just want to work one-to-one -one with a student or two at the most. If you want to use work with more students you have to subscribe to the professional version. You can see on the right hand side I've got an assets option. This allows, allows me to actually um, upload some documents which I might want to share with my learners. So if I go to the plus button there, that says upload a new image. Then we've got add a website snapshot, a Flickr image. Um, if I click on the upload a new image option, you can see that you have a range of file types. So it's not actually a picture as such, a, 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 an image as we would know it. So we can upload PDF, PowerPoint, um, Word documents, JPEG images, GIFs, PINGs. Um, you would do this in the um, usual way in that you would browse, um, browse your own computer to select a, a file to upload. If I go back to the participant screen, 
Um, you have some options along the top here. So you can cut, copy, paste elements of the screen. You can undo or redo and you can delete. You've got options to flip shapes. Um, some of the other options are only available on the pro version but you can clear a page or you can clear all of the pages. You can take a snapshot of a page. The equation editor is actually only available in the professional version as is Wolfram Alpha that links with the equation editor. If I just click it um, you can actually get a preview of the different options so you've got maths, physics, um, if I click on each of these I can get a sample of what that would do but you would have to subscribe to the free version for this. You have an option to have a scrolling page fixed or scale. If you're working on scale you can actually set the scale to, to what you would like it to be. Um, I then have some options here so I can change the colour, I can change the thickness of a line and then on the right hand side I have the usual interactive whiteboard options. So I've got the selector tool which allows me to select something on the page, I've got the pencil tool, um, it'll go for a colour red um, and this would allow me to to draw something on the page. As you can see my autistic skills aren't the best in the world. Um, again in a pencil tool we have the text tool so if I sorry if I click on the text tool I can select a font size, I can select a, a font style I'm going to say with a sans font because that's generally more accessible for people. I can choose my bold italic underline and I can choose a colour so we'll have we'll have purple. Um, text entered here. Okay so I need to make that a little bit bigger but you can see I have the text box there. Now I've clicked further down which gives me another select a, a text box. If I click on the selector tool then select the text box I can actually delete that. Um, you've also got an option to install some shapes so we've got rectangles, circles, triangles, we've got a polygon so again you draw the polygon. Now this is interesting because you have a little tool here that allows you to change the number of points on the polygon just by dra dragging it. So that's quite useful. Similarly we've got a wedge shape tool here which I just drag. Um, again I can change the size of that wedge by just dragging on this tool. I can rotate it, flip it. So again that can be quite a useful tool. Um, highlighter, we need to, we select a highlighter colour, we'll perhaps go with red um, and I can highlight the text there. So it might be useful if you want to highlight a part of a page. The stamp tool is quite nice. Um, these are the stamps that we can use. I quite like the star. Um, so I can just make that a bit bigger. And again I can change the colour so we'll go with a gold star. So this might be quite nice if you're using this tool perhaps to give feedback on a piece of work. Your learners can use the whiteboard tools 
in the same way so they can contribute to the page. You have a chat pane at the bottom. So you can send that um, message to students or students can communicate with you via the chat pane. You can also um, send a link to the Scrivener page through Skype. I'm not sure if we can see the bottom of the page. Just let me see. Yeah, I perhaps should have select. Ah, there we go. Um, you can see there we've got page one of one. If I want to in put a new page in, I just click on the arrow there and I've now got a clear page with no information on it. So I'll go on to the text tool. This is I must maybe make that a little bit bigger. Okay, and we'll make it bold, italic, and we'll change the colour. Right, so if I Again, if you want to get rid of that extra box, just click on the selector tool and the delete tool at the top. If I want to clear this page, um, I can click on clear page, confirmation required, yes. Um, I can also click on clear all pages, click on yes, and if I go back to page one, you can see that's been completely cleared, as has the information on page two. So it's quite useful in that you can have a number of pages open at the same time. You can upload a document for your learners to work with and you can use another page um, for them perhaps to respond to questions, um, use the whiteboard. What, what, whatever whatever you really want to um, include there. So that's Scribbler really. Um, I, the only thing I didn't send you was uh, show you was that um, initially when you open a new room, you have the option to invite people. I'd already um, set up this room, but you will, you will have an option to enter the email addresses of the people you want to invite. So in room options, I, ha I can set this as send an invite or I can embed it. If I embed it, I, I get a link to embed into a web page or a document and that will allow my learners to si either sign in or join the room as a guest. Um, if I send an invite, then I put my name in and my email and the emails of the people that I want to invite. So that's Scribbler in a nutshell. A very useful tool, um, worth just spending a bit of time on your own, playing with the tools so you're familiar with it. And just remember, if you want to use it with Skype, um, switch off the microphone within Scribbler, but it works perfectly well. Um, in Skype and you could use the room option, embed the room and send that link through the Skype chat pane to your students and then work collaboratively on the whiteboard.